Well, hello and welcome to the online edition of Forsyth Church of Christ on this uh, Sunday morning. If you're watching live, my name is Daniel Kirkendall. I'm the associate minister here. This is John Dobbs, the preaching minister, and I'm excited that you've chosen to be here with us today. Absolutely. We're so thrilled that you would take the time and want to spend this time with us. Uh, it's the day after Christmas if you're watching live, and so there's been a lot of activity over the weekend, and it's time for us to relax and just give ourselves to some time of worship and praise to God and spend a little time in His Word. Daniel's going to uh, preach for us this morning and lead us into communion, and we'll be back with some uh, brief announcements at the end of that. But we do want to thank you again for coming and being part of this time together from Forsyth Church of Christ. Yeah, so, you know, it is the week after Christmas, and uh, this is, again, if you're watching live, I'm going to talk to you as if you are watching this on uh, Sunday, December 26th, 2021, the last Sunday of the year. We still have five days uh, days left in the year, which is kind of unusual. I mean, it happens every couple of years, but uh, we, we're coming off of Christmas Day that I'm sure was just filled with uh, a lot of activity for, for everyone. And, and it just seems, you know, part, part of me says it seems like it was a long time ago, but then part of me is still recovering uh, from yesterday. I, I kind of consider this week a uh, a little in-between week, you know, where uh, we reflect on the year, the recent events, um, the joyous occasions that we've had, the the good times of the year. But also, you know, we had some tough times. I, I'm, I'm sure all of you had some tough times, some maybe sad times or hurtful times uh, over the past year, um, several months. Um, I also think about the opportunities that, that I've been blessed with, that, that God has presented me with in my own life and in my family's life. And I also think about the mistakes and, and the things that, that I regret of, of the past year. One more th thing I think about at, in this kind of in-between week are, are some of the things that I've learned in the past year, the, the different areas where I've grown uh, personally and, and spiritually. And I also think about the, the times when I, I, I needed to learn something and I wish I wouldn't have had to, to learn the hard way. But, you know, there is just a lot of stuff to take in in these in these five days before 2022 comes around and um, we turn the page, we look ahead to the new year. I, I think about, um, you know, the just change, the change over the past really year or, or two years, uh, to be honest, I, I begin to wonder what's next in my life. What's going to happen next? What am I going to witness? What am I going to experience? What do I have to look forward to? And, and of course, what do I have to, to be concerned about? What's, what could possibly happen? You know, COVID is still kind of in the mix. It's um, it it comes and it kind of takes over, and it uh, you know our news cycle and our our news feed, and we hear about it everywhere. And then it seems like things are settling down, and then it it pops back up again to uh, to disrupt everything in our lives. And that we're kind of in that that season right now. It's happened, you know, three or four different variants that have have come and, and created a lot of uh, problems. And I, I really don't want to kick a, a dead horse, but it just kind of we're kind of used to the uncertainty that something like uh, a virus has created. It's it's been massive in terms of of the impact it's had recently on our lives. And you know the truth is it's just it's one it's a big one, but it's just one of a, a countless number of influences that that have impacted our expectation about what's going to happen next. The truth is there is so much uncertainty uh, about the future. It's, it's something that I struggle with uh, thinking about. I think it's something that we all struggle with to an extent, our, our concern and our worry uh, about what could possibly happen uh, in the future. And, you know, uncertainty and, and that type of feeling kind of gets in our heart and in our minds and it grows and, and it multiplies and, and it creates a sense of fear. I mean, it makes us afraid. Um, and that's, that's what fear simply is. It's it's not being unsure or uncertain about what's going to happen, but you've already concluded that it's not going to be uh, good. We all experience fear like this in, in some way uh, or fashion in our own lives. Uh, politics, I think about, you know, the past, uh, you know, 14 or 16 months with, with politics. I think about personal finances. You know, sometimes our situation financially creates worry or fear in, in our lives. Um, health, of course, you know, COVID and the other things where we all want to be healthy and many, many of us are fearful that we may not be and, you know, our relationships, just our safety, our safety for our families, uh, 
just just security. And then I think one other thing is is our our eternal salvation. You know, we all want to be saved, and it's something that we can we can let consume our hearts and our minds in a, a sense of fear. I definitely think that this is what Solomon was talking about. He knew where he was going when he says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so that lets me know that getting to know God is the key to overcoming fear. Instead of wondering or or experiencing confusion, we can have understanding with our knowledge of the Lord. Being able to understand what will happen instead of concerned about what will happen, that that it will either make us unafraid or it'll give us courage to face uh, what, what's coming. So with uncertainty surrounding us all the time and getting to know God is, is as important as, as it ever was. So recently, if you've been watching our videos, you know that this past week we did, uh, we've been doing our Getting to Know God series in our midweek Bible studies. And as the holiday season came around, we turned to getting to know God through the person Jesus, and we talked about him being King of Kings and and Lord of Lords, and then this past week we did one called Emmanuel, and and as I looked through that and and got ready for that that short devotional, I I just thought to myself like there's just a lot here. I I think we need to kind of continue this on on Sunday uh, of the past year, and so I think it's a practical topic, um, at least in my own personal life, and and the ones who are close to me, I know that this is something that that may help them. I, I hope this message resonates. Uh, with you, but um, fear is crippling and it's it's debilitating. It's it's not a sensation that any one of us really enjoy or or seek after. You know, when I was when I was thinking about that, I was like, you know, there's a haunted house. I mean, um, you know, we kind of seek after fear there, but that's not really fear because we know what's going to happen. We're certain that we're going to make it out on the other side of that of that haunted house. Um, you know, but but the question is, how do we begin to find? Um, to overcome real fear, real life fear? Where do we find that understanding and that, that certainty uh, that we need that's in a world full of surprises, full of injustice, and, and full of confusion? And I really believe that the answer to that is found in, in Scripture, and it's in, found in the name Emmanuel. The, the name Emmanuel is really, it, it, it's only mentioned three times in Scripture. It's mentioned twice in the book of Isaiah and once in the Gospel of Matthew. And so Matthew, the New Testament, the very first book of the New Testament begins with like a, a genealogy of, of Jesus Christ, which kind of sets the stage for his, his royalty, his kingship among the Jews. The Jewish reader uh, would have felt that Jesus was qualified. Um, but then immediately after this uh, genealogy, Matthew goes in verse 23 of chapter 1 um, into this prophecy. He quotes the prophet Isaiah, and he says this. He says, The virgin will conceive and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And this concept, again, was just fascinating to me as I was uh, looking at our lesson for this past Wednesday. And it gives it, it gives us an intimate look, not only at the character of God as we get to know God, or just the person of Jesus, but it also shows the love, the strength, and the faithfulness of God Almighty. Matthew was... Um, was Jewish, and so he was well informed of uh, of old writings and the foretelling of the coming Messiah. And as he writes this gospel, this very first time that he quotes this literature that he was so familiar with, he says the name Emmanuel. He quotes throughout his gospel, but this is the very first one, and I think that's uh, I think that's important and on purpose. So he, it's amazing what Matthew does here as he's writing. He he combines the divine nature of God with the humanity of of Jesus and brings him into one. And this uh, perceived commoner, Jesus of Nazareth, um, has both of these qualities. Uh, he's divine and he's human. So not only does it establish that, but it also establishes the fact that we have a holy God, a righteous God, a perfect God that, that we have read about and that Matthew had read about for, for years and years, who is now on this earth. It, it was the, the result or, or the fulfillment of a promise that had been made more than a thousand years prior to, to Isaiah, whom Matthew quotes. You know, and so the presence of God is a, is a big deal on earth. And of course, the presence of God has always been there, but not like this, not in a, a physical, human, material form, not since uh, we read about Adam and Eve walking and talking with God in 
the Garden of Eden. We do see him in, in other forms throughout Scripture. We see him as a, a three mysterious men when he visits Abraham one time. We see him as a, a, a smoking pot um, and as he as he makes the covenant with Abram, we see him as a burning bush when he when he talks to Moses, or a or a cloud around a mountain when he when he gives Moses the the Ten Commandments. We see him present, and then as they establish the tabernacle, God makes his dwelling place in the holy of holies, where the ark ark of the covenant is. And so God's presence has always been with his people, but just not like uh, a human being until Jesus was born. Once Jesus is born, God's presence and promises is brought to life as part of his uh, creation, a living being that will experience life on earth just like you and I experience life on earth. He'll experience hunger and thirst and, and fatigue and laughter and, and mourning and all those things that, that come with that. Jesus, as he lived on earth, he, he experienced the loss of friends. He experienced personal victories. And so these are human things that Jesus, um, God in the flesh, actually experienced. So the story that Matthew is telling us begins with this connection between divinity and humanity. And this really paves the way um, for me and, and for you and for the readers of that time. So this is something that just is seemingly impossible. And, so, and, and right here we learn that, you know, God, whatever seems impossible to us, God makes possible. It reveals something more, I believe. The name and the meaning of Emmanuel itself, God with us. It tells us that God is with us, but also that he really wants to be with us. He did not have to do this. He had to do it for one reason, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, he yearned for a relationship. He yearned. He longed for companionship with me and you. Before God flooded the earth, you can see just how much he desired a, a companionship. Before he flooded the earth, he, he saw how wicked and, and evil the earth was. And the Bible tells us that he regretted making mankind because of the fracture and the and the distance that we created uh, with that relationship with God. And, and, and it, it really literally broke God's heart to see his creation so far away from him. There's an intimacy that God pursues with with me and, and with you. And, and that is, intimacy is rooted in, in love, a type of love that, that is hard to see in, in many places around the world apart from from Christianity and God's love. John chapter 1, verse 14 says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory. And so this God that we read about in the Bible, the God who, who took literally nothing and created everything that's ever existed, is born as a child in the most un unkingly of, of circumstances. It wasn't in a temple or uh, a religious affiliated hospital. It was in a barn, a feeding trough, in a small, insignificant town, and uh, these unexpected circumstances reveal that the glory witnessed by the world would not be in how Jesus was born, but through his acts of love and through his teaching and, and his parables and, and and how those cut to the heart and, and turn people uh, towards him. And he made impossible things possible. So this is how we have seen his glory. So at the root of this, there's something that seems overlooked in this uh and the retelling of the story, the birth of Jesus and things like that. And we see, you know, God coming down to earth and we see that he wants to be with us. But the truth is, is we needed it. We, we can't have that relationship on our own. We needed someone to come to earth and to save us. The expression of love through Emmanuel, God being with us, is, is unfathomable. It's, it's, we, can't, we can't understand it. God wants to be with us. But we needed Jesus to make that happen. God was willing to do whatever it takes. That's what unconditional love is. Willing to do whatever it takes for those in whom you profess your love. The authority um, to overcome temptation uh, that Jesus had while he was on earth, it, the way he lived his life, a, a perfect life, and, and then to die and to conquer sin and death. And it was just a story that we couldn't make up and we couldn't be a part of without the humanity of Jesus. So I think about kind of the, the thought process of God, and I know we can't understand the mind of God, but I think about God, you know, saying, um, you know, you mean I'm going to have to strip myself of the glory of heaven and lower myself to be born in meager circumstances and, and live a life where I'm essentially homeless and, and unemployed. Um, 
you know, for for the, my whole life on earth? And he's like, yes, I, I'm willing to do that because I love. Also, I'm going to, you know, this guy's thinking, I'm going to have to face temptation and in an environment where Satan's prowling around like a hungry lion trying to to devour and undo all the goodness in the world and and uh, and mercy in the world and the grace in the world and and God's thinking he's going to have to come down and, and live in that world and resist all of that for his whole life. He's like, yes, I'm willing to do that for you too. Oh, by the way, your creation, the ones that you're coming down here to save, those are the ones that are going to reject you. They're going to mock you. They're going to try to embarrass you. They're going to physically beat you. They're going to spit on you. And this is going to continue pretty much throughout your whole life and beyond your life, even to this day. They're going to execute you in a brutal manner, and you can't do anything about it in a negative way, a mean way, an unloving way. But God says, if there's another way, I'd take that way, but there's not. So I'm willing to do that because I love you. And one more thing, after they murder God, our Jesus, God in the flesh, that you know, he's dead. He can't stay dead, though, because the plan won't work unless God comes out of the grave. And God says, I promised I would do that, so I will do that. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened, because he wanted to be with his children. So the name Emmanuel tells us uh, so many things, I think. It, at first, we see the definition. It means God with us, and we think about the baby Jesus. But it also means that God desires and longs for this relationship with all of us. It does also mean that he was with us in the flesh. He was among us. Um, but it also means that he's still with us this very day through the Holy Spirit and through the church. And so we still have uh, this, this idea of Emmanuel in our lives today. Not only that, but because he pursues this relationship and because he came to earth in the person Jesus and because he lives on in his Holy Spirit, then we have the opportunity to live with God forever and have that relationship. He can be Emmanuel to me and you forever. So Isaiah, I mentioned earlier that I, the name Emmanuel is mentioned three times in the Bible. When Isaiah mentions this name, it was in a time of uncertainty for God's people. They were kind of in the midst of a, a war and battle. I don't want to get into that story too much, but God tells Isaiah to go to the king of Judah. And the first thing that he tells Isaiah to tell this king is to be calm, be careful, and don't be afraid. And then when he appears to Joseph in, in, uh, in Matthew, um, right before the mention of the name Emmanuel, this angel comes to Joseph, and guess what he tells Joseph? He says, don't be afraid. There's so much uncertainty about what's going to happen in, in my own life, even today or, or tomorrow. So even more so in the year 2022, as we, we turn our calendars and, and beyond that, we just really don't know what's going to happen. Life is full of surprises. We have very little control on the outcome of, of our decisions, and, and that creates fear in our lives. So fear kind of abounds in this world, um, and it's all because of, of uncertainty. But we, as beloved children of God, we can be certain. We can have knowledge. We can have wisdom, and we can know what is going to, to happen in the big picture. We can be certain that God wants us, and he will go to no end to prepare a way for that relationship to be possible, for us to have hope and love and courage to face the uncertainty of life. He has, and he is, and he will pursue that companionship and intimacy with his creation. You know, King David said in Psalms 27, verse 1, he says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The, uh, the God is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So this is something that somebody who was a man after God's own heart, somebody who did have that closeness with him, said, hey, he's my light. He's my salvation. I don't need to be afraid. And so the question is today for, for me and for you and for, for anyone who hears this is, you know, how are we going to respond to that, that relationship with God, that Emmanuel, God being with us and pursuing us and wanting to be with us, not just now, but in the future and forevermore. How are we going to uh, respond to that? You know, when I think about that closeness with God, I, I'm, I'm excited about what we do every Sunday at, at Forsyth Church of Christ. I, I really enjoy the time that we have. We take a moment every Sunday and we spend time in communion, not just with one another, but with God. We try to pursue um, that, that companionship, that intimacy, that closeness uh, through uh, the act of, of communion.
And so today, um, I'd like to invite you to participate in that with us. And uh, if you have your, uh, your grape juice or your wine and, and your bread with you, uh, then we're going to do that in just a minute as we think about that intimacy and that closeness with God and with Jesus. If you will, pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for, uh, for who you are. Um, there are so many facets of, of your identity that, that we can see throughout Scripture, but they all point to one thing, that you love us and you want to be with us. And you were willing to come down to earth and, and live a perfect life and, and set an example for, for believers. You were willing to come down to earth to die a brutal death and, and sacrifice yourself for me. And you're willing to come down to earth and overcome that death and be victorious over the law of sin and death that holds us all hostage. And thank you for the freedom that that gives us. And as we think about that life and that death and that resurrection, we, we do it by, by taking this bread, which represents your body, the body um, that did hang on the cross, but also the body that exists today in the church. I pray that we, uh, as a church, are uh, come together and are unified and, and are shining light in the dark world. And as we partake of the uh, the fruit of the vine that represents your blood, the blood that represents life and, and freedom. Lord, I pray that we are we have we have that assurance, we have that certainty about what's going to happen, that you are with us and you're watching over us and you will deliver us. And it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you, Daniel, for an outstanding message as we end our year together, our year of Sundays, and look forward to a new year. And we're really glad that you were with us and listened today and want to invite you to think more about becoming more involved with Forsyth Church of Christ. We meet on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock and Wednesday nights at 6, and we'd love for you to come, and especially if you're local, to come and meet us and for us to get to meet you and, and spend more time together and grow together in the Lord in this coming year. We're so grateful for Emmanuel, God with us, and we want you to come and be with us as well. We're thankful for your presence here online, and we hope that you'll check out facoc.org. There you can find a opportunity to communicate with us, the communications tab, to sign up for the email bulletin and the text messages, and, and to send us a private message so that we can uh, answer any questions that you have. If you'd like to be baptized or if you'd like to uh, ask a Bible question or if we can help you in some way, please be in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. And we thank you again. If you like this message and, and it was uh, important to you, then to like and share it would help us and help other people maybe as well as uh, in the uh, Facebook world and YouTube world. So thank you for your time today. We want to have a prayer together, and then we're going to uh, call it to a close. God, thank you so much for the great words we heard today that came from your book, from the Bible. And I pray that those powerful words will help us to remember that you are with us, that you're with us through the darkest valleys, you're with us through the happiest times, that we, we really are always in your presence. And what a glorious and beautiful truth that is. And I pray, Father, that that will alleviate the fears that we face in this world. There are a lot of threats, but you, your presence, your power is so important. And we're grateful for that. Grateful for that reminder that we heard this morning as Daniel spoke to us. And now, Father, would you speak to us? Would you bless us? Would you help us as we go through this week and into a brand new year 
Uh, we pray, Father, that you'll fill us with energy for you. We love you. We thank you. We believe in you, and we love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through my fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. No longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child.